mysterious Heineken bottle found, crazy mixology happening at Starbucks, plus news from the Great American Beer Fest. I'm your host, Chris Hardy, and this is your Straight Beer News for the week ending October 16th, 2016. So all over this week was news of a 13-year-old British boy who found a Heineken bottle in the sand as he was taking a leisurely walk on the beach. The boy's name is Robbie Chappell, and he was walking on the Hailing Island Beach in Hampshire, England, when he came across a Heineken bottle that had a note in it. If you can recall back when you were a little boy, all the things that you had, um, all the things that you could have imagined running through your head at that moment, like, could it possibly be a treasure map, like maybe One-Eyed Willie's treasure map, or maybe it's a long-lost love note, or maybe it was something more adventurous, something like a message coming from a faraway land, maybe America or Sweden or France had a message, or maybe it was from someone legitimately stranded, maybe on the Isle of Man throwing this bottle, and it's maybe hundreds of years old. Who knows how old this message could be, and what could the message contain? Luckily for us, he's a typical 21st century boy, and he recorded the whole thing for us. So here I am. I was just walking along the beach, looked, trying to stay close to this wall, because I know right up around this corner, I'm going to find what I'm looking for, and look, oh, there it is. There's my beach. Oh, it's kind of rocky, but look, what's that straight up ahead? Hmm. What is that? Oh, it's a bottle. Look, see, yes, it's definitely a bottle. And it ooh, looks like it has a message in it. Let's see what the message has to say, shall we? Dan and Dan was here October 1st, 2016, 12, 19 p.m. Out are nuts on cocaine. Massive love for the sash. Lots of love. Sesh Gremlins. Okay, so that's not really the true events and the recording that he made. Um, that can really be found in the in description below. I'll have a link to that video and you can see how he um, came about his dreams being crushed. He'll probably never be the same again. This week, Starbucks unveiled a new drink at their Starbucks Evenings locations. So for a little over a year now, they've been doing these Starbucks evenings at certain restaurants, certain locations of theirs across the country. In the evening times, they will do craft beer or glasses of wine with uh, small plates, so trying to make themselves into a, a more contemporary, more hangout place for the, the millennial age. This week they unveiled a new drink that they're calling Espresso Cloud IPA. And it starts with a full glass of IPA. And the mixologist, I guess if you can call a Starbucks barista a mixologist, or the inventor of the drink, he came up with it by, um, the, originally the idea was he would take an, expre an espresso and, and a shaker bottle and shake it up vigorously until it created a frothy foam. And that foam he would scoop out and put on top of the IPA glass. On top of the foam of the IPA, so it was basically foam on foam. Then he didn't want to just waste the leftover espresso, so he dumped that also into the drink. And it kind of created this neat little separation of the espresso or the foam on the top then the kind of the espresso darkness in the middle and then the rest of it is the uh, the yellow colored IPA and it kind of made this neat little visual and uh, hence the, the name the espresso cloud so this week I put my best crack team of investigative reporters on the case to try and determine what IPA is being used and from this picture that they used in their promos for the new drink it's pretty clear that it's an Evo IPA by Two Beers in Washington State. Now it's possible that this IPA will vary from region to region or state to state. Um, I've, I've heard also that it's possible that, the, that Starbucks is using a Stone IPA in their California locations, or at least in the Southern California locations. So your IPA may vary, hence your taste may vary. Um, but if you're in any Starbucks location, this is a 
kind of a neat little drink if you're a coffee fan or a beer coffee fan even, or a coffee and beer fan. These kind of come together and give it a shot. Let me know what you think. I'd be interested in your thoughts. It's unfortunately in Michigan there are no Starbucks evenings locations, so I won't be able to try any myself personally. So I'll leave it up to you to give me your feedback and let me know what your thoughts are. Lastly, while we're talking about IPAs, uh, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that the Great American Beer Fest was being held in Denver, Colorado, and that was held from October 6th through 8th. And so I'm here to give a, a brief little recap. One of the interesting statistics that came out of the fest was the number of beers presented in the American IPA category. So in their statistical report after the event, they had numbers from 2010 through this year on the different categories of beers that they were judged upon. And that category in particular, the American IPA, was interesting to look at since in 2010 there were 150 beers presented for judging and it grew every year thereafter by on average 17, greater than 17 percent until this year. This year we saw the first decline in entrance into the judging for this category. Now the obvious question is why? Why would it have shrunk after growing pretty rapidly over the past five years? Why in 2016 do we see a, a decline or a, a, a pushback in, in, in the category? Could be any one of a number of factors or any combination of the factors, um, but a couple of theories that have been put out are potentially that the IPA as a category in North America is shrinking in general. So maybe a lot of consumers are turning around um, to look at new drinks. Maybe the IPA fad or trend has peaked and maybe we start, we'll, we'll start seeing a pullback here in the next uh, couple of years as new categories come in. For example, sour beers is one that a lot of people have theorized is going to be the next big thing. Another factor could very well be too that it's because it's been growing so large and there are so many entrants in any given year, it's hard to win a medal. And of course, brewers are looking to win medals to gain marketing advantage and to gain publicity. That those medals mean a lot. And when there are over 300 contestants, it's a little hard to make your IPA stand out from the rest. The chances really are pretty slim, so your funds are best spent in entering other categories, maybe. I do want to congratulate, however, my um, local Michigan breweries who have won at the competitions. We had gold, silver, and bronze medal winners throughout the state. So congratulations to all of you. This week is going to be the Michigan Fall Beer Fest and will be held in Detroit, so very local to me, and I will be there. I'm looking forward to trying those beers that won medals this year. Well, that'll do it for this week, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I'm your host, Chris Hardy, and I do this every week. And I'd appreciate any feedback. If you'd like, give me a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing. Uh, you can also subscribe, of course, or leave a comment in the comments box uh, down below, and I will reply to you there. If you want to reach out to me in any way, you can do so. I'm on Twitter, at Straight Beer. I'm also on Instagram and on Untapped. You can find me there. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great week. Take care.